I was trying to get this shoe to 100 miles to make this long-term review, but we got it to about 83 miles. And the problem that you saw in the thumbnail happened, the upper separated from the midsole. Now, there's a lot to talk about here, so no pretty B-roll, we're just gonna jump into it. Now, before I get into the Meta Speed Edge Paris and the problem that I ran into, which to me really isn't the end of the shoe, I'll get to that. I've got to tell you how I've been using this shoe. Now, I made a video at the end of April talking about how I'm going to spend the summer focused on 5K speed. Now, as someone who's primarily been a marathoner or a half marathon, 5K speed or faster is something I've never really focused on exclusively in my running. In fact, I've never really focused on structured training for 5K speed. So all of the workouts that I've been doing in the Metaspeed Edge Paris have been fast workouts. And when I'm saying fast, it's 5K or faster speed, which right now for me is about 344 per kilometer or about a six minute mile. That's my 5K pace. But I've been doing a lot of 200s and 400s in the Metaspeed Edge Paris at around 326-ish. So it's about 530 per mile, um, much faster than I would ever be doing in any sort of marathon pace build. And I think that amount of force that I'm putting into the ground, because that is very fast running for me. And I think I'm comfortable saying that's pretty fast running in general, but especially for me, the amount of force I'm putting into the ground doing that type of work, I think is also added to the stress that I'm putting into the Metaspeed Edge Paris. Overall, this shoe has performed beautifully. This is a fast shoe. In fact, this is probably the fastest super shoe that I own. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and probably say this is the fastest super shoe that's made in 2024. This is a insanely fast shoe, but it's not without the problems. And I'm not even really talking about this, the, the upper separation from the midsole. Now, talking about that point first, I honestly, I'm not really blaming ASICs for that. I don't see this as a construction or manufacturing problem. I see it more as a me problem. Now, I have this weird quirk in my right foot where I scuff it or I twist it a little bit, and I'm usually really, really rough on my right foot, and this is my right shoe. So typically that means I go through the midsole and the outsole very quickly in this area because I supinate and land on the lateral edge. It means I go through the outsole and I really compact the midsole on that area. This shoe's held up really well for me in that area, but because of the design of this shoe, I think it's contributed to me um, tearing away the upper from the midsole. And you put in the forces that I've been putting into this shoe, doing that faster running in this shoe, I think that's contributed to this issue ultimately. And there's really kind of one major thing that I think has really done that. But again, I'm not blaming ASICs for this. I think this is a me thing. And I'm not blaming ASICs for this because I haven't seen anyone else with this issue in this shoe. Now, I ran a lot in the Nike Vaporfly Next% Percent 2, and if you remember the Next% Percent 2, there were a ton of issues of the medial side upper separating from the midsole in that shoe. It seemed like every one's pair did that. Now, I own five pairs of Next% Percent 2s. Four of those pairs had that issue. Two of those pairs had it in both sides, and the other two pairs had it on one side. And the last pair, the fifth pair, never had it because I didn't really run in them very much. By the time I bought those, it was a couple weeks before I got the Vaporfly 3, and I never sort of went back to the Vaporfly 2 after that, except for a couple testing things I've done on this channel. But the thing that I learned about this upper separation on the medial forefoot from the next percent too was that as soon as I saw it showing up, was that I would put a couple dabs of super glue in there and it would completely stop it. It would never come back. So the final two pairs that developed that issue of Next% Percent 2s that I had, I did the super glue thing and I never actually had a problem with them. They never separated completely. But in the Metaspeed Edge Paris, I saw the separation begin around, I would say 85K or so, so a little bit over 50 miles. And I initially was gonna put super glue in there to stop it, but I left it. And this is what it looked like at about 85 kilometers. 
And if I would have put super glue in there, I'm confident this would have stopped it and we wouldn't have had this problem. But I left it because I wanted to see what would happen, mostly to make this video, but also be able to talk about the durability of the shoe. And as it stands right now with this pair of shoes, I have 134 kilometers on the shoe, or about 83 miles. So I did a bunch more workouts and a bunch more running in this shoe once I saw this issue starting to arise. And it got progressively worse, but it kind of got to a point where it stopped, you know, kind of about here. But in the last workout I did in this shoe a couple days ago, it just completely tore away. And this damage that you can see here really came, came out. Now, I, that was in a 200 uh, meter rep that I was doing all out max effort was the final rep of the workout actually and i actually heard the upper rip i looked down i saw all this white i knew exactly what was happening and it felt like the midsole was flopping around in there which it kind of was so if you follow me on strava link in the description you'll see this workout data in fact i publish everything on strava so all my data is there if you want to check that out again follow me on strava link on the description but that's why that final rep in that workout from a few days ago was um, so slow because the shoe kind of just blew apart there. Now, it was interesting because on the jog home, I really began to feel that I had actually torn the lasting board in this shoe. And there's now a ridge in here that's right under my big toe. Now, there is an engineering aspect of this shoe that I think has also caused this separation of the upper from the midsole on my right pair. And that is something I did talk about in the initial impressions video of this shoe. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check that out. A lot more technical detail and deep dive into the shoe there. But I talked about this as being a very high platform that's very narrow. This is 34 and a half millifoam in the forefoot and a 10 centimeter width in the forefoot. Now I'm a forefoot striker who supinates. So this is a very tall, very unstable shoe. And when I'm doing that scuff or the twist and I'm on uneven pavement, which part of the route that I primarily do my workouts on, at least to get to where I do my workouts on, which are on like bike paths along the river, I'm going through uh, kind of industrial roads. One of them is heavily cambered. It's got some iffy pavement in it. And this shoe absolutely hates that stuff because it's so unstable and it really does not like that. But when I'm on the straight flat, you know, pass that I'm doing a lot of the workouts on, this shoe's totally fine. So it's something that if it's long, straight pavement, this shoe does really well. But if it's iffy pavement, you really do feel the inherent instability of this very tall, very narrow platform. And the other thing that's contributed to that instability is the foam, FF Turbo Plus foam in this shoe. Now, I really like this foam. But over the past 83 miles or 134 kilometers, it has softened up. It is not soft like, say, Zumex. There's no sink into this foam. This is still a very high shoe that you feel like you're up on a platform. But it's definitely softer. So I've noticed a lot more um, instability across the width of the shoe because the foam is slightly softer and I'm, I'm just feeling a lot more. So where this shoe out of the box was already unstable, especially on uneven platform or heavily cambered roads, now that this, the foam has softened up, it's even more unstable. So I think that instability also has constantly forced my foot to kind of roll out. Again, I'm a forefoot striker who supinates, so I think it's just pulling the upper over towards the lateral side of the shoe, which again is contributing to you know tearing away from the midsole put in my little scuff or cork that I have on my right foot. And I think that's all contributed to actually tearing away the upper from the midsole. But otherwise, the durability of this shoe has been very good. If you look at this shoe, there's not a lot of creasing in the midsole foam. There's a little bit, but not, not substantial. Otherwise, the shoe looks fairly new, um, looks in really good shape. And the outsole of this shoe has held up really well. Now, Asics's outsoles on their Meta Speeds, the Magic Speed, their race outsoles are absolutely outstanding. They're very durable. This one is absolutely no different. And I have a little bit smoothing here on the lateral edge where I'm really rough and I typically wear through, usually to the foam at this point on a super shoe. But this one's holding up really well. Getting a little discoloration or really the paint kind of chipping away right where I'm landing all the time, but it's just cosmetic. There's absolutely no other issues with the shoe. And as I said, the left shoe, looks new there's no issues over here and I, it has even better wear on the outsole of this shoe there's almost very little um 
smoothing out of the outsole rubber here. In fact, I can still see the little lines and grooves on it right there. So this shoe is held up beautifully other than the one issue that I've run into, which again, I think is a quirk of my specific running stride. From a performance perspective, as I said, I think this is the fastest super shoe that I own, and I think it is the fastest super shoe of 2024. This shoe is insanely fast, but you really need to have a nice, clean, crisp foot strike because otherwise this shoe will kind of beat you down. The, meaning the sweet spot of this shoe is very narrow and you've got to have really good form and be really up on it to make this shoe work for a long distance. Now for what I've been using this shoe for, for like, 800, like 200s, 400s, 800s, 1K repeats, maybe some 5K time trials here and there, it's totally fine. I don't think I could actually run a full marathon in this shoe. I just think it's too harsh. It's just too extreme. Additionally, FF Turbo Plus Foam, while it is considerably better than FF Turbo, it still kind of beats up my legs. Now, if I did a hard workout in, say, the Metaspeed Sky Plus in FF Turbo Foam, my legs would be shot for days. Literally two to three days, they were sore. In fact, the day after the workout, I probably couldn't even run. I'd have to take a rest day. In this shoe, I am getting much better recovery aspects from it. The day after the hard workout in this shoe, I can still run. It's going to be an easy run, but I can still run. And by the second or third day, I'm totally fine. I'm back to normal. But the recovery aspects of this foam compared to, say, Zoom X or Light Strike Pro from Adidas, it's not as good. So the other reason I would probably never run an actual marathon or a long distance race in this shoe is just because from a recovery standpoint, my legs just do not respond to this foam. It's better, but it's still not great. But for short and fast and workouts and, and all of that sort of faster running, this shoe is so fast. But if I was going to go race a 5K, which I will be doing in the next couple months, even though this is probably the fastest shoe I own, I don't think it's what I'd actually race in. I, I have two other shoes that I think are as fast, but better for me over that distance. And I'm going to be making a whole video about all of this stuff. So subscribe if you want to see that one pop up in your feed. It'll be on the next few weeks. But I really enjoy this shoe. I enjoy running in this shoe and I enjoy the speed of this shoe. And from a training standpoint, this shoe really rewards a nice, clean, crisp foot strike. Good knee lift, you know, putting your foot down, being really snappy and quick feet off the toe. This shoe really rewards that. So I can really feel that. And, and honestly, the little twist in the scuff that I have, I can feel it really apparent in this shoe, more so than really any other super shoe or any other trainer that I have. So I know when I'm having good knee lift and a really crisp, clean foot strike in this shoe. And I like that from a training perspective. So even though it's the end of the road for this pair, as I said, I can't repair this because I've torn the lasting board right here and there's a groove down here, there's a seam. I can't run in this shoe anymore. So these shoes are toast, they're done. But I like this shoe enough that I'm probably gonna buy another pair. Now I'm in no hurry to buy that pair because again, I've got other super shoes to be running in and I've got two specifically that I prefer running in for the speed work that I'm doing right now. And in fact, I'm so interested in actually going faster. I'm, I'm shifting focus to kind of 800s and 1500s to the point where I bought a pair of track spikes and I'm gonna start doing some track workouts um, for 800s specifically. So that's gonna be a whole other content stream. There'll be videos on that stuff. Uh, stay tuned for that too. But I like this shoe enough that I am gonna buy another pair. Now I'm considering buying a pair of Metaspeed Sky Paris because I think I have a really good sense of the Edge Paris, and I know a lot of people in my Metaspeed content have been asking me to cover the Sky Paris and give my thoughts on the Sky Paris. And now that I have a pair of Alpha Fly 3s, I can do that direct comparison between the Alpha Fly 3 and the Sky Paris, because those are the two kind of high plate configuration shoes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about there with plate configuration, I have a whole video about that, about how to choose which Metaspeed is right for you. Go check that out if you've not seen it yet. But I'm going to buy another pair of these. It's not going to be in the next month or two. Um, and I'm still not completely set on buying a pair of Sky Paris, but I figured um, it's worth, you know, experimenting and, and really learning how that shoe runs. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in my thoughts on the Sky Paris. It probably won't be till October, maybe November that I get to it, but it is something I'm considering at this point. 
So even though this wasn't the, the longer term or 100 mile review of this shoe that I wanted to do, I'm still very positive on this and I would still highly recommend this shoe to anyone looking for a very, very fast shoe. Now, if you're a runner who has a very uh, clean, crisp foot stripe, really good mechanics, really strong, really well trained, this is gonna be an excellent shoe for really any distance. If you're kind of the non-elite uh, version of runner, kind of like us normal runners, and maybe you don't have the best mechanics and maybe you're not always right up on your toes with really good foot strike, I think this is gonna be a really good 5K, 10K, maybe half marathon, but it may be too brutal for a full marathon. And when I'm saying that, I'm talking about the Metaspeed Paris in general, not necessarily the edge. I think the sky probably would be in the same category as this shoe. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you find this content useful, consider subscribing. You'll see more content from me pop up in your feed. If you already are subscribed, I've now enabled memberships on this channel. Click the join button under the video title, or if you're in the YouTube app on an iOS device, use the link in the description to join. If neither one of those options are great, leave a like on this video, leave a comment. That helps this channel continue to grow, which I always appreciate. And with that, I'll catch you in the next one.